Today, we will check out this open web UI, which we can use to chat with local models and our local documents. It has a user interface similar to ChatGPT and runs locally. Let's get started with the install. To manage our local models, we will use Olama. Download and install it from the Olama website. Excuse me, but who are you? Just double click the installer file to launch the installation process. I am being ignored. Oh, well, I guess I will be quiet for now. Once that finishes downloading, we can go to the models page and download a model. I am going to select Llama 3.1. Here, we have a command we can run to be able to chat with it from command line, but we just want to get the name of the model from here. I will open a command prompt and type Olama list. We see that currently, there is no model on our system. We can download it by calling Olama pull followed by the name of the model. In this case, Llama 3.1. This will download the model file to our system so that we can use it later with Open Web UI. Once it finishes downloading, we can run Olama list again to see that now we have that model. Next, I am going to install Miniconda. You can also use Anaconda if you wish. I will select the Windows 64-bit link to download the installer. I'm suddenly back. Double click to launch the installer and keep clicking next, taking all of the default values. Once that finishes, we are ready to install the Open Web UI. They recommend installing with Docker, but I find that Docker takes up a lot of my computer's memory, so I try to avoid it whenever possible. The local Open Web UI has a login screen which will require you to make an account. You can disable this by setting this environment variable. I'm going to go ahead and set this environment variable and set it to false so that we don't have to log in to use the Open Web UI. I will just copy the name of this variable from here and then go into the environment variables. Click on the start icon and start typing environment variable to see that option show up. I'm going to create it as a new user variable. Paste the variable name here and set the variable value to false. Click OK on all the buttons. Further down on this page, there is a section for manual installation. Open a new Anaconda prompt and let's build an environment. It requires Python version 3.11, so let's create a new environment called Open Web UI and use Python 3.11. The syntax is conda create dash n, followed by the name of the environment, followed by the version of Python. You don't need to create a conda environment, but I find it to be simpler to manage Python applications that may require different versions of Python and dependent packages. Proceed through the setup of the environment. Once it is set up, remember to activate it with conda activate and the name of the environment. The installation of the actual Open Web UI application is a simple one-line command pip install Open Web UI that is shown on the page. Once you run the command, it will take some time to install all of the packages it requires. Once it installs, launching it is a simple one-line command, Open Web UI Serve. It will initially download some model files it requires and then launch a web server that you can access from a browser. The URL is localhost port 8080, as is shown on the page. Once you launch the page, it will automatically log in a generic user, since we had set that environment variable to false. And here we are. On the bottom left, you can access the settings to change things like the theme. You can also specify a system prompt, language, and many other things from here. On the top left drop-down, you can select a model. So far, we only loaded that one model from earlier. It should show up here. Let's select it and enter some text for the prompt and try to generate. The first time it runs, it will take a while to load all the things. Any subsequent prompts should be much faster. Let's ask it to name five things similar to ducks. Geese, swans, mergansers, guinea fowl, teal. Oh my, I have never heard of half of these things. I thought teal was a color. The speed of the responses will probably depend on your machine's specs and the model you choose. You can also chat with documents. There is a plus button which lets you add documents to chat with. Let's give that a try. I'm going to create a simple text file with some simple text typed in a very simple way. I am very simple. I'm going to do something similar to last time, where I say there are three ducks and seven goose and some birds flying. In my testing, I found that if you want to chat with a new document for the first time, you should start a new chat. Click the new chat button, select the model, and then upload that text file we just created. This supports text, PDF, HTML, among other typical formats. 
Once the file is selected, we can start chatting with it. I'm going to ask it the same thing as in a previous video. How many animals are there? It says there are ten birds. Interesting. I did make mention of birds, but I didn't say how many birds there were. Let's ask it how it came up with that answer, since I never mentioned the number of birds. I just said there were some birds flying. I see. It did identify the number of ducks and number of geese, and is considering them birds. Wait, are ducks and geese birds? If so, then this is news to me. I never knew that. What do you know? How does the saying go? You learn something new every prompt generation? With that in mind, let's go back to the text file and change it to dogs and cats. Let's save, and remember to start a new chat for the updated document. Select the model, attach the updated file, and ask it the same question. So the answer it gave me last time that there were ten birds was technically correct. Let's see what it says this time. Correct. It calls them animals. It is very to the point. Let's ask for some details. It tells me the number of cats and dogs, but doesn't understand what I mean by these ten animals. Ha! Huh? Fair enough. I did some more testing with PDF, but we'll spare that from this video as I don't want to get too sidetracked with the testing chat with documents. If you want to select a different model, you can find one on the Olama site. Just run the command Olama pull and the name of the model that is listed on the Olama site. This will download the model to your machine. If I run Olama list, I now see two models listed. And if I go back to the open web UI and refresh the page, those two models should show up in the model's drop down. And if you want to relaunch the open web UI, you can launch the Anaconda prompt, activate the open web UI conda environment, and then call the serve open web UI command again to relaunch the web server. Then you can access it from the browser again, from the local host port 8080 URL. Once you see this giant ASCII text saying Open Web UI, you can access it from a browser. Just type in localhost 8080 and you will be automatically logged in as that generic user and can see all of your previous chats that you had the last time you used it, and so forth. Just make sure Alama is running and you should be all set. The O Llama icon should show up in your system tray, indicating it is running. If it is not there, then you will want to run Olama by going to start and typing Olama, and it should show up there. Anyways, I like this web UI because it is pretty straightforward to install, and it doesn't require Docker. Running Docker alone without any image takes up at least 4 GB of my computer's RAM, so this method is much more lightweight in that sense. Anyways, that is all for now. Enjoy!